You've probably heard of CFCs, ozone depletion, and global warming. But what do all of those mean, and what do they have to do with grabbing a cold drink out of the fridge and sticking your face next to the air conditioner? Stick around to learn about refrigerants and how chemists are trying to make them more environmentally friendly. Hey everybody, Sophia here. 100 years ago, refrigeration systems used chemicals like ammonia, methyl chloride, and sulfur dioxide that are very dangerous if leaked. So in the late 1920s, Frigidaire tasked chemist Thomas Midgley Jr. to come up with a new refrigerant gas. The compound had to be non-toxic and non-flammable. Midgley's team came up with a chlorofluorocarbon called CFC-12. Soon, CFC-12 and its relatives were popping up everywhere, in refrigerators, air conditioners, and cars. But decades later, scientists realized they had a serious problem. CFCs were destroying the ozone layer. How, you ask? When CFCs reach the stratosphere, ultraviolet sunlight breaks down the compounds, releasing chlorine atoms. These chlorine atoms start the breakdown of ozone molecules, O3, into ordinary oxygen molecules, O2. O2 is great and all, but we need O3 to keep harmful UV rays from reaching the Earth's surface, which helps prevent sunburn and skin cancer. And these man-made CFCs are the number one reason for ozone depletion. So what did we do about it? In 1987, the Montreal Protocol on Substances that Deplete the Ozone Layer, real name, banned CFCs. And it was a good move. Here's what the Antarctic ozone layer looks like now, and here's what it would have looked like today had we not cut back on CFCs. Nowadays, manufacturers have mostly switched to hydrofluorocarbons, which is less harmful to the atmosphere than most CFCs. And progress continues to be made. This March, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency approved five refrigerants. These new products are ethane, isobutane, propane, difluoromethane, and a hydrocarbon blend called R441A. Now, just because these refrigerants are less harmful to the earth doesn't mean they're without their problems. A lot of these new products come with not so great side effects. Some are flammable, as in there's a very small chance your fridge could catch on fire or their inhalation hazards, or they require a ton of energy and therefore more greenhouse gases to use. So making refrigerants more environmentally friendly can actually create additional problems. Chemists then have to turn around and hunt for better compounds that get rid of these new problems, in addition to the old problems. It's like a less fun version of whack-a-mole. Constantly trying to make refrigerants more environmentally friendly and then putting out the unintended fridge fires. That's all we have for this episode of Speaking of Chemistry. Be sure to check out the articles that inspired this episode by Steve Ritter and Steve Gibb. If you plan on skipping the air conditioning and braving the heat this summer, make sure to check out our Speaking of Chemistry on sunscreen. And don't forget to subscribe and share. Stay cool.